Hello, this is an assessment of a Richard Lipp baby grand piano made in about 1912 and the client's moving from A to B and wants us to assess it yeah, on, in transit. She's actually bought the piano from us in 2013 um, and was very pleased with the piano. The, apparently her son is a concert pianist and came last year and really loved the piano too so that's encouraging. And um, There's a mark here which we can certainly improve. She did talk about the casework being improved so this side I, I think it's probably rosewood, but I'm not the best at woods. But m most pianos of this age and literally lips are rosewood. Though it's um, a different type of rosewood from the Brazilian rosewood that we're used to. If you are a wood expert, then please do let me know because I'm not good at that. But the, the legs are darker and the rest of the piano is darker than that side there. We could obviously French polish the whole piano, which we'd love to do. Um, it's not got an incredibly figured uh, grain on it, but it would look quite stunning if it was done, I'm sure. Um, this side here is darker. It's been done in, in a very dark polish here. Uh, you can see the video, actually this video is showing up a lot more of the grain than you can actually really see. Um, so that would be the underlying grain of the piano, but it's more or less covered up by this very dark colour. Um, let's have a look at the lid here. There's no fading on it, which is encouraging, because there often is fading there. And you can see quite a lot of um, touching up to do, trying to improve the case. But this, the veneer is generally good. There's a mark that can't really be improved if we repolish the whole piano. That would be, um, you wouldn't get rid of it completely. This is typical trademark Richard Lip, a beautiful style of music. And such incredibly design, well designed pianos they are. Um, and if you're in the trade, you might like to back me up on that. But Richard Lip is just, with the top manufacturers really, just not so many of them. Not such a well-known name. This is the later logo um, on from about 1905, I think. Uh, before that, it's much more um, decorative logos. Where this is more, uh, shall we say, Art Deco kind of logo. It's beautiful, and uh, that was sold when we had the Seven Oaks branch. We had it for a short time, and the chap was the head of Renner UK, but he moved on to do something else, and so we couldn't carry on in Seven Oaks, unfortunately. But we did open up a bit of a market there, which was encouraging. Um, I love this style of legs. Um, that's uh, what could kind of both down to one caster, and uh, that's again typical lip. I don't know if anyone else does that. Lip certainly with their baby small grands and and the larger grands of this age too did did that so, that style. Um, generally good condition down here. That's dark. Uh, the pedals don't sh don't show a huge amount of wear. They're sloping downwards slightly, which is encouraging. About seven centimeters from the floor, and the leg uh, room is 61.5. So it's not a huge amount of leg room if you're a very tall person, um, but uh, quite adequate really. You couldn't really put caster cups under there, the very big ones, because. Um, the pedals will be too high, so maybe one centimetre or so, uh, that would be the thickest you could do. Um, now looking at the mechanical side, first of all it has a perfect set of ivory keys. Um, uh, there is actually a little chip here, which I, I think it tr we, we may have tried to re repair that in 2013. Our team is better at disguising that now, and, and we'll make that repair uh, almost invisible, I think, from what I've seen recently. Looking at the inside of the piano, that's new, new strings and new tuning pins. There's a serial number. They're off, serial numbers often missing on lit pianos, unfortunately, but it's very clear on that one. Um, and the strings, you can see, as highest quality as we can get, really. They're German-made strings and either done by an English company that uses German strings or German company. I think it's an English one, actually, that was near to Oxford. And uh, the dampers are perfect, the damping beautifully if you're lift, lifting it up, they're all lifting exactly together. We'll listen to it in a second, the soundboard's perfect. So I'm just trying to see how we can improve the piano because we did work on it extensively in 2013 and uh, just it's going to be minor improvements really or just refinements. Uh, obviously we can always try to refine a piano that we've refined uh, that long ago. Uh, hopefully there's more work that we can do to just to make it just that little bit better. I mentioned before it's typical of a thoughtful manufacturer that the, the cheek screws here they don't fall out they they stop there which means you don't have to, to put them anywhere um, and also lip um, go one stage better they have the, really the best fitting front and front rail and cheek of any piano the whole lot comes off together and underneath there's a beautiful dovetail joint i don't see why all manufacturers can't do that but lips certainly do it 
consistently well. Now looking at the action, the felts are all very tight, which is good. Um, the hammers have been refaced at some stage. I expect we did that when we sold it. And uh, the tone is excellent, really. It just a bit of voicing here and there, but they're nice and hard still, and they've been voiced already. So just trying to find voicing. You notice the literal lip spring mechanism is different here. Um, we have shown that before. It's very different, and uh, a lot of technicians are really admirable of it. In fact, admirable of Richard Lips generally. It does seem to work extremely well. It's a beautiful touch. You see this spring here, spring system. If you look at a standard spring system, you'll see how different it is. Here's a Beckstein Model 5, and you can see the spring here um, is underneath. It's, it's a butterfly kind of style spring. Sometimes they have springs that go down to here with a screw adjustment. There are two different Beckstein designs, but that's a typical spring design. So as you can see, this lip style is completely different. Um, different from, I think I've seen one other make of piano similar, but lots of Richard Lip brands have this design. If you want to adjust the spring, you have to take it off here and then just bend it upwards and put it back on. The springs are generally adjusted very well if you let it check and then lift your finger a little bit off the key and you'll see it moves upwards, not too fast so it doesn't double hit, but um, it's hard. It's quite hard to get these very, very consistent, but so you have to be a bit patient to get them exactly the same as each other. So on the assessment sheet, most of the items are not good, the regulation items here. Just checking everything through. Um, the casework could be made good, could be repolished. Um, that's the decision to make. It looks very attractive really as it is, though if it's repolished you bring out more of the grain. Lubrication of the balance rail and some of the hammers, I didn't show you that earlier, but just slightly tight some of the hinges. Uh, lubricating the balance rail pins will bring this, uh, more, even it out I'm sure, where they're a bit heavy it could well be the balance rail pins, or possibly the hammer that's slightly too tight. Um, so that's fine, the weighting there, but plus or minus 4 grams might be acceptable, or sorry, 2 grams, so we expect within that range, 59, 50 it's a bit too much variety. 50 is fine, 59 is a bit high. And so if we look down here, if we lubricate the balance rail, well, so that one there was, that was one of the ones that was high. Uh, if we lift them up and they don't fall down, then that means they need lubricating and they nearly all lift up without falling down. Could have absorbed a bit of moisture, that's what happens. That That's fallen down a bit. Um, we can lift them up and we this, this rail, by the way, if you're a technician, it'd be useful if you leave that reasonably high. Um, so that we can check this, because it's useful to be able to check it if you perhaps loose, loosen these off of it, or rather, if there's usually an under screw, there isn't on this one, as you can screw them a bit higher up, because there's no reason to have that lower, um, it, it's only to stop the keys falling out in transit. Um, that's my chalk marking different things. So this one here I've marked, because it needs voicing, it's a bit bright. So I think the best thing to do now is to tune the piano and I'll be able to see which notes are bright and mark them as I go along the way. And if there's anything else that might need doing. So that's Richard Lip piano, five foot long, made in 1912 approximately. And it's moved, been moved from A to B and we've got it in transit just to see if there's anything that could be improved on it and just tuned the piano really wasn't a huge amount to do on the tuning. It's a very stable piano. Um, just to sort of see whether there was any extra work and there's a bit of voicing to do. We can, that one there for instance, if we do, if we do semitones like that, that, that one, those are brighter. Now it might be that the client likes the brightness, so he must perhaps try and voice up to make brighter the ones that are mellow. Um, but I would think probably just mellowing them down slightly. There's another one. And these are a bit on the mellow side possibly here. And that's quite bright. So the up there you want them to be reasonably bright. You want them to stand out. Generally slightly mellow. But 
beautiful sounding and the touch is excellent on this piano too. There's not a huge amount to do to this piano, but there's, there's always refinements to do to any piano. If you've got a piano that you want to move from A to B and would like us to look at it on the way through, we'd be delighted to do so. Even modern pianos, we've recently had a modern Steinway Model O, which there was a lot of refinement to do. Um, over the years it had got slightly stiff and the action was, was not as fluid as it would li we'd like it to be. So if you're buying a, a, even a modern piano, you might feel that you want it to, uh, to be assessed, which we're very happy to do. Or if you want someone to come to your house to assess it, that may be possible. Obviously there's a limit in how much time we've got, but try and do that on high quality pianos. Thank you very much for listening.